All right, guys, welcome to our first of two How to Draw videos this week. You guys voted. Thank you. Big thanks to everybody who turned out for the vote last week. But this is our first time this school year that you guys voted for a How to Draw video. And guess what? Tie. Tie between Sun and Moon. So check out for, look out for that video. And Frog, which, guys, like, literally my two favorite things to draw. So thank you guys for voting for those two things. Very excited. I've practiced frogs nearly my entire life. So I'm very stoked for that. And one of my favorite symbols was sun and moon. So be sure to check that video out. Um, here is what our frog drawing will look like when we are all done with this. Something like that. A version of this frog is what our frog drawing will look like. And guys, Honestly, I couldn't be more stoked that you guys picked frogs to draw because I actually started drawing frogs when I was in your age range. I have this how to draw video, how to draw book, excuse me, from elementary school. I'm not kidding you. I loved this book so much. I drew, I think, every single animal that a it has in here and proof that is from my elementary school days are these amazing monster stickers that I got in um, somewhere in elementary school that I got for Halloween which I was really excited about because they were the type of stickers that you could color in yourself um, I think that was the very first time I had something like that that it was sticky but I could color on it too oh my gosh mind blown um, but here's my awesome monster I colored in over there, and here's my Ichabod Crane, uh, Headless Horseman guy, um, from S Sleepy Hollow. Loved it. I was obsessed with Halloween. Still am obsessed with Halloween. Um, but that is my proof. Those are still on there. It's actually starting to peel up because the sticker is losing a little bit of its stick. Breaking my heart. But I love this book. You guys ever want to learn how to draw animals? I will teach you how to draw animals from here because it made my life so fun when I was your age. Um, and not only are we going to be learning how to draw frogs, though, a big part of this video to me is I want to teach you guys how to use these how to draw videos or keep doing it, how to draw books, because honestly, I feel like people buy the how to draw books and then they just think magically, oh, now I'm going to know how to draw. But it doesn't work like that because the book never really explains how to use the book. It just kind of breaks it down into this. And I've seen so many people struggle, myself included, with how do I get from this to this? And it doesn't really make sense. And do I have to use red? And what's going on? I don't understand. And everything kind of shifts from here to here. What, what sort of magic am I supposed to conjure up to make this happen? I'm here. I'm going to teach you guys how to use those books. So hopefully, if you have some of your own how to draw books, it may make a little bit more sense to you as to how to use them. I am going to be using a red colored pencil. And you know what, guys? I know my drawing here, it was my practice drawing, is done in regular pencil. I'm going to toss that out the door. I'm not even going to be able to erase for this. You guys can totally use pencil. This is what your drawing will end up looking more like if you use pencil. But I want to teach you guys how to draw from these books with pencils I cannot erase from. To show you guys, I will be making mistakes. I won't be able to erase them. And my drawing is still going to look super awesome at the very end. So erasing is not everything. You can just switch to a different color. If you're using pencil and you want to try doing the two color thing, you can just switch to a pen at the very end. I'm only going to be using the second colored pencil at the very end to make it look more like the frog. And this is going to be the color I'm using for all of that underdrawing stuff here. And honestly, having that underdrawing stuff there can be really cool because a lot of it is actually kind of the muscular system and the skeletal system of the frog and when that shows through even if it's not supposed to be part of your final drawing but when people can see that you took those things into consideration it makes your drawing look that much more realistic so don't worry about erasing just grab yourself a pencil and let's get to drawing I'm going to turn off the picture in picture so you can focus on what's happening over here. I cannot wait to see what you guys make. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, here's my paper. Here's my book. 
Here is step one. Actually, for us though, ooh, hit my camera, excuse me. Actually, for us though, step one is going to be making our guidelines. So I'm going to try to divide this edge of my paper in half, which is about right here. Your guidelines, while I will not be erasing them, you still want them to be nice and light because they're not part of your final drawing. They are just there to help you make your shapes nice and big and in the right spot ish about and let me i don't know why it always seems easier for me to draw lines down towards my body i feel like i'm steadier with my hand as if it's coming towards me not away from me it's probably just how i practice drawing so much maybe you guys are the opposite but for me that works best I have four equal-ish rectangles that I feel like I am ready to go. Here is the center of my paper, found by my guidelines. This is our first step. So guys, I'm actually going to give us a different first step. Sometimes, most of the time, these books will try to break it down in the most basic shapes. This is not the most basic of shapes. I can see a more basic shape drawn in here, which is an oval. So I'm going to just draw an oval on here. I'm going to start in this rectangle, our upper right hand rectangle, up towards the top. The top of my oval is going to be my frog's head. And as you guys can see, as down here, I don't really have anything else going on outside of the frog's head. So I can get pretty darn close to the top of this paper and know that my drawing should not really go off the edge. So I'm going to try just over here. Somewhere over here, in this rectangle, I'm going to start my oval. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And then I want to bring my oval down here, but I want to know where the end of my frog is going to be. And for this oval, you're actually going to end up adding on a bunch of legs and stuff. So I don't want my oval to be too close to the bottom because I want extra space, at least enough space for my frog's legs. So I'm going to say I want like four finger lengths to make sure all of my frog legs get on there. So I'm going to line up this finger with the bottom of my paper. I'm just going to make a little dash somewhere over here. That's about, about four finger lengths away from this line and the bottom of the paper is where I'm going to put my little dash and I'm going to connect my oval down to here. And this is a thin-ish oval. When you really break it down, frogs have almost like a, I don't know, like a surfboard shape to them. They're a little bit skinnier towards the front and a little bit bigger towards the back end. Um, I don't know if that just helps them dive into the water better, if that's some sort of shape by natural design type thing. But it's pretty cool, so I'm not going to question it, I'm just going to draw it. Alright, I've got my oval. That makes me happy. I'm okay with that. Then with my oval, I'm going to come down to right about here, just on the other side of this guideline. Just about a finger length out of there. And I'm going to create this arch that's happening over here. And I want that arch to come down right like this. And it's okay if your arch goes all the way through. I'm actually going to extend that arch a little bit later on. So I'm happy with that arch. I'm happy with my oval. So what I'm going to do is actually draw from that line down a little bit darker so I can get my drawing to look more like this drawing because right there on my guideline, that's actually going to be where my frog starts. Voila. Now, I'm at step one. Fantastic. All right. All right, now we're going to move on to step two right over here. I'm a, I like starting at the head and moving my way down. It just makes more sense to me. Um, all right, so I'm going to add a circle up here by the top. Leave a little bit of space for that nose. 
somewhere right around here. This big old circle across that these big little guys. So we've got a circle here, and there's a hint of a circle happening on the other side, kind of at the same diagonal as this. That's where my other circle is going to end up. So if I were to draw the same kind of arch perpendicular to this one, running along the same line, just a little bit higher, that's where the second hint of my fog eye is going to be behind my fog. It's about the same size circle if you can get them to match. They don't match completely, but I'm okay with that. All right. Now. I'm going to draw the line that comes from basically what I would call the very center of where this oval is. If I were to divide that in half right there, I'm going to draw that line, but it's not going to be a straight line. It's going to come curving a little bit towards this arch we put in here. So just a little hint of a curve down here. And then I'm going to go up a little bit right here, and I'm going to continue that curve right to the middle of the back end of my frog, my frog butt. All right. Got my curve lines in there. Now let's get our leg shapes in. This is just the first part of our leg shape, and this is where I like to extend this curve that we drew just a little bit. I think it makes a nice guideline for where our legs are going to go. So I'm just going to curve that outside the frog's body. And I'm going to say that leg just happens just a little bit above where that curve is. And it's not quite straight like my pencil. It's a little bit angled like this. So I'm going to draw a curve up to where that angle would be. And then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a flat top to that curve and bring it down into my frog's body. Now I'm going to add the second leg. Now that is actually going to extend a little bit further from my initial curve right here. But it's really going to be almost straight coming off of this line that we drew that met in the middle of our oval over here. So I'm going to draw a curve, slight long curve over here, cap it off like that, and then I'm going to bring that back up towards my line. It's not going to connect quite, but it's going to get awful close. All right. Now we got our second fog leg in there. We are moving along. Moving on to step three over here in our drawing. Let's start up towards the head, work our way down. So frogs have these circle things behind their eyes. I totally meant to look up what those things are. I don't know what they are, but I always thought of them like drums. I don't know why, but they just remind me of like the top of a drum. But they have those things over here. And I am definitely going to look up what those things are, but they are here, right behind the eyes. Just slightly bigger circles than the actual eyes are. Now we're going to move down to our arm, which is going to come down. Here's the circle we drew for, I'll just call our drum. And it's going to be like right below where that circle is, right on the bottom of this initial oval. And it's going to come down to basically that knee. So that, that distance between the bottom of the frog's body and your knee may be different. It was different in my initial drawing. It was like way bigger. Um, I think it's actually better to get the proportions correct than it is to fill that space up. So I would just make this a shorter oval, maybe about half the size of your frog leg, if you've got like a massive distance between your frog and, and this knee back here. Um, just divide that leg up in half, and that's about the same. All right, now let's move on to the second part of our frog legs, which are just more ovals. So this oval 
I'm noticing extend a little bit past the frog foot and a little bit below. So I'm just going to give myself a little dot right there that I'm going to connect to. And I'm noticing that there is a bit of space right over here, about the same space it is away from the frog foot. And so now I've got those anchor points. I'm going to connect this oval up. And back to here. And then back over here. Cool. That works. And then back to this leg. Pretty much the same shape. A little bit down away from that knee. And then a little bit extended out past the frog butt past this line that we did. So a little bit out, and then up and down. Cool. All right, moving on, going quickly. This is awesome. Starting up at the head, our frog has a bit of a smile. It curves all the way under your frog's eye and stop somewhere near that circle that's right behind your frog's eye. It's just the slightest little smirk right there. Now let's work on that front leg. We've got a even shorter, it looks about half the distance of this uh, oval. Kind of eats into this first oval a little bit and it's angled slightly out this way. Oval. And then we've got another circle right up here. So if this were a flat plane right here, that circle's a little bit up above where the bottom of this oval is. And again, it seems to be about half the distance of this down here. All right, now let's move over to this leg. We are going to to give ourselves a bit of a halfway line right here. If I were to divide this over in half, it would be about right here. I'm going to extend that down. I'm going to connect from this pointy end right back here down to that line I just drew. Up, and then connect, extend into this original oval shape and out towards that line. Kind of adding a french fry onto that oval. And let's add a french fry on this oval here. And this one's a little bit less than half. So I'm going to do that right underneath my guideline. The little line sticking right out and then just connecting down. Cool. All right, moving on to step five. This is where things start to get cool. Let's give our frog a little line under his eye. Let's give our frog these connecting lines. So this is the one cool thing I loved about this drawing. I remember when I was drawing it when I was younger, it looked so cool and realistic. So where this drum circle sits on this original arch that you drew down from the nose down to this other arch, you are actually going to just draw a curve up. So this line comes through here and actually comes up and then down. And you're going to do the same thing after this circle. You are going to draw a line that comes up to the very edge of your very original first oval right there. Kind of same arch some curvature up and down. Cool. All right. Now we have nothing but toes to add. So let's start with this front one. So what I really love also about this drawing is that it gets the oddness of frog's toes. Like this one kind of would curve out and it wouldn't even have a pinky and they look kind of like 
Oh, now I'm terrified that my hand actually looks like a frog hand, but <laughs> they kind of get all wonky, and you've got this cool little thumb. Um, so we're just going to, the wonkier, the more realistic these toes get. So I'm just going to draw the lines that kind of I'll beef out later to make into toes, but um, kind of think of them like your fingers. So this is a short one that's kind of like your thumb. It's curving around this way, just the teeniest bit. And then there's another one, it's just slightly longer, a little bit further out from that original one. And then we've got a third one that's extending just a little bit more, a little bit longer. And then we've got another short one, kind of like your pinky gets a little bit closer to where your thumb size is, that is extending out this way. All right, so just four lines that are sticking out there but the back, uh, back paddle uh, toes are gonna be a lot longer. So let's make our first toe. That's gonna come right off this French fry shape, right over our guideline. And it's just gonna be just a line, just like that. However long you wanna make it. They've got awkward long back toes, so it's okay. Uh, however long and awkward you want to make them. And then that next line, you're just gonna come down a little bit off the end of that french fry, just give that first toe a little bit of space, and then up in slight curve. Just longer. The next one's going to be even longer, slightly down, and then slight curve again. That fourth one is going to be the longest, so I'm going to start out by how long I want it to be. Follow that curve, connect it back to that small distance I'm going to give it over by the french fry shape. And back down here, getting a little bit smaller. There we go. And it's totally fine if you didn't leave enough space for the leg or for the the flapper, flippy paw, whatever, <laughs> the foot over here. That's all right. If that gets cut off, gets cut off. Excuse me. Then all of that still looks awesome. It doesn't really matter that you smushed all that in the same space. So let's go over to this foot and do the same thing. So I'm just going to add a curve that comes down to the outside edge of our front fry shape, get a slightly longer one, and just the hint of our third toe. And we are awesome. Here is where I'm going to switch from this colored pencil to my purple colored pencil. And I'm going to put on these final touches and this is basically all of these sketchings right here this is the black they put over here but i don't have black so it's going to be purple um i'm going to show you i'm going to try to walk you through because this is the biggest jump all how to draw uh books make they go from the sketch to this amazing completed thing and they don't really explain anything about what's going on so the first thing you want to do is look for what is different. So what is different for me, I'm seeing right by this line, there's a nose just like a little bit underneath it. So I'm going to get that nose in there. And then what's different is they have the top of this line. That's actually just like the top of the eyelid over here. So I'm going to follow that line up and over towards this line over here. And I'm just going to let it extend a little bit towards this arching line. Boom. And then you actually have to draw a smaller circle right inside that circle. That is your eye. And this frog is looking kind of zen. So let's give him an eyelid on the top and the bottom. Got an eyelid. And then got a pupil kind of up and downward cap right there. And I'm going to go back over this bottom lid there. And the same thing that happened over on that eye over there, we've got a drum. I don't know why I call it a drum, but it's my drum. Okay, I'm going to go down this way, follow that circle, and then it's going to connect onto that line. And you're just going to follow that line 
towards the bottom, not connected. I'm just going to forget about it for now and work back up to here. Make this circle a little bit smaller inside the circle that we just drew. And a little arch over here. That's different. A little mark over here. That's good. Just need a mark here, a little mark underneath that circle drawn. And then let's go back up to the tip of our nose and work our way down the bottom half of our drawing. So kind of cuts this thing. I don't know why, but this part of the drawing always reminds me of Gollum. If you guys are Lord of the Rings fans, this just woo, creepy. If you've ever seen the animated version, he looks very much like a old distressed frog. So I'm going to follow that line down to my leg. And here's where we have another big difference. So the leg doesn't connect like that. We have a line that comes up around that curve that we drew. And then another one that comes off of it towards the bottom of our frog body. And now let's draw the leg in. I'm going to follow that line. And give them a little inside curve there. And then follow this line down. Don't connect. And let me get this little, little frog paw over here. And this is basically following all those lines we already drew. Mark drawn over. Now we've got our frog paws. So those are just going to come up. You're going to give them a little bit more meat to them. They're not just sticks out there. And they're just going to be, just like your fingers, a little bit wider towards the base, a little bit skinnier towards the top. But they are nice and long and skinny fingers. So, And like I said, they're really awkward shaped. So it's not the end of the world if they look awkward because if you ever get up close to a frog, they've got really awkward fingers. I used to go hunting for frogs. Uh, when I was young, in my front gully, and I would feel around in the muck at the bottom with my feet, and I would find them down there, and I'd dive down, and I'd find them, and I'd look at them all the time. I love frogs, they're so cool, and they do have these weird little, like, sticky, sticky feet. All right, moving back up. I'm going to stop over there, and I'm going to finish the top part of my frog. Bring him down towards that point. Follow up the line with I. Down towards where I drew on my whole new drawing. And then a little along the curve. It's best if you just go slow, continuously check where you are, following along with where the book is. And the book makes his butt a little bit more pointy at this point. Just want a little bit more of a point. And then curve him around. All right, going back up to the eye. There's a little line here. Nice little line over here. Nice. More or less those details. All right, now there's kind of lines that follow these lines on the side. So they kind of go up right here. They kind of hang right on this main trunk following that line. And it's kind of broken up a little bit. We'll just draw that like that. And then over here, again, same kind of following one line, going up, hanging a little bit, and then another Right. All right. Now, what do you say we work on our first leg? Let's do this background guy. All right. Let's just we'll start on the outside edge. So we basically follow that all the way up to that knee. And here's where something's a little bit different. That knee kind of sneaks in and then out to kind of encompass that other oval we did over here. 
and then curves up over here. And then sweep down, get the rest. And come back over here. Here, then just trace around the lines. Leave in those toes. Just a little bit meaty, but these toes, unlike the front toes, aren't going to come all the way back down to that original circle you drew. They're just going to come down a little bit, and then you're going to bring that awesome frog wedding paddle stuff up. So again, I'm just going to bring this meatiness down just a little bit towards that, and then sweep it up with that wedding. That makes it kind of like flippers if you've ever been swimming in the ocean. Usually if you're out there with a group, they got you with these little, uh, little flippers on there to help you swim a little bit better, a little bit more like a frog. All right, now let's get to our second leg. So I'm just going to add on that little belly over here and whatever, whatever that shape is over here and up to my leg. And then up underneath, just follow that original shape and sticks a little bit more and then back in and let it sweep down. And then we follow this outside curve line. And down like this. Back up to here. these little wrinkly curves that works. Now again, we're just going to get a little bit of meatiness to the little lines you just drew. You don't want to just do lines and lots of webbing. So up and around and then lots of little webbing. Up and around and webbing. All right, guys, our frog is basically done. You can add those little spots on there if you want to. What I like to do is just remember you've got some that are curving up over here and just add in whatever spots you think look awesome and good. You get to just map them out in these sloppy little rules. The spots are not what is important, and you can color those in when you're all done. Okay. Spots, spots, spots. You know, I could say I've caught a lot of frogs in my time, but I don't remember ever seeing one with actual spots on it. But... I'm sure it exists because everybody draws their frogs for spots. I was just never looking for them, I guess. I'm just coloring these in a little bit more lightly so they are not the first thing you notice when you look at the frog. Because they are, to me, the absolute least important part of this drawing. But they do make it look a little bit more finished. If you want, you can make that a little bit darker towards the outside edge, going in. And it just gives it a nice little hint of depth. All 
All right, guys. That is your frog. Here was my original drawing of a frog. Here was the drawing with the red. You can tell having that red in the back, not that scary, kind of cool. Makes it look a little bit more, makes it look a little bit more, I don't know, like your professional sketcher. Like it's kind of, oh, look at all that work I did. Oh, you noticed? My goodness. I mean, it's awesome. So don't ever worry if you can't erase something. It's practice. If somebody judges you because you didn't erase something, then they've got the problem, not you. Your artwork is amazing. I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. I hope you had fun learning how to use a how to draw video. I hope you had fun learning how to draw your frog. And you guys are so amazing. I miss you so much. You can go ahead and check out that sun and moon, but both of these videos are pretty long. So if I were you and you really want to draw something, just pick one. Whatever is your favorite, whatever one you voted for, probably. Bye, guys. I miss you so much. Stay creative, stay awesome, use those imaginations, miss you.